Hello and welcome to another Explorer video. Today we're taking a look at a spicy 80 card Yorion build with the Overlords alongside Enigmatic Incarnation, which is a true build around in the deck, a 4 mana enchantment, saying at the beginning of our end step we may sacrifice another enchantment. If we do, search our library for a creature card with mana value equal to 1 plus the sacrifice enchantment's mana value and put it straight onto the battlefield. So Incarnation alongside the Overlords allows us to potentially search up a 6 mana creature on turn 4 already while getting all the value from impending the overlords. So turn 3 we can already impend the green overlord, making a tapped everywhere token, which will make a man of any color, as well as having all basic land types, and that's also going to be relevant alongside a leyline binding enabling domain. And then we've got the blue overlord, which will draw two and then discard a card if we impend it, and then also later if we cast it for five mana, and once we start attacking with them as well. So turn three overlord into turn four enigmatic incarnation is kind of the dream start. And then we also have a lot of two mana enchantments that we could sacrifice to the incarnation, which will often provide value as soon as we play them, so we don't mind sacrificing them later, which is why we have so many one-off creatures at three mana, as well as a lot of one-offs at six and seven mana, since we can sack the two mana enchantment to get our three drops and sacrifice the overlords or perhaps a leyline binding to either get the six or seven mana creatures respectively and leyline binding potentially castable for a single white mana if we have one of those everywhere tokens in play with overlord otherwise typically two mana in this deck once we get all four basic line types in play no red mana in the mana base despite running the red overlord since we're hoping to be able to search this one up by sacrificing a five mana overlord and then this being an enchantment also allows us to to sacrifice it once again to keep going up the chain to get our seven drops like titan of industry which can also stabilize us quite nicely or of course atraxa providing a ton of value when it enters the battlefield and our other six drops include sanctuary warden making citizen tokens and drawing cards and then we've got a noxious gear hulk which can destroy a creature while gaining life also important against aggro and then of course we're also a Yorion deck, so that's why we're playing 80 cards to begin with, so this can flicker our stuff when it enters and to re-trigger our various enter the battlefield abilities. And then taking a look at some of our other enchantments at 2 mana, playing 2 copies of High Noon, so we can potentially slow down the more aggressive decks that rely on casting lots of cheap spells in the same turn. And then despite not having red mana in the mana base, we can still use the green overlord to eventually get access to red mana to sacrifice it. Nowhere to run, another new addition, taking out a creature when it enters, and then we can later still sacrifice it. Nylea's Presence, also quite good with a Leyline Binding, as it will make it cost 1 mana, and then also draws when it enters, so we don't mind sacrificing it later. And up the Beanstalk, another staple of any Overlord deck, as even if we impend the Overlords, we still get to draw an extra card, also very good with a Leyline Binding. And then we've got a bit of extra removal here with Vanishing Verse, Exiling Monocolor Permanence, and Fatal Push for creatures. At 3 mana, our one-offs include Goodsell's Flanker, giving us Graveyard Hate, or potentially Gain 2 Life and Scry 2 can also come up. Skyclave Apparition can exile opposing permanence. Glasspool Mimic, either a land or a way to copy a creature that's already in play. Knight of Autumn can gain life or deal with artifacts and enchantments. And then Azure Eternal Schemer, also very nice with Overlords and with Leyline Binding, turning those enchantments into creatures with Death Touch, Life Link, and Hexproof. Then at 4 mana, just the Incarnation, which we can also sacrifice to itself potentially. So we can search up a 5 mana card, and then maybe with the other Incarnation trigger, sacrifice a 5 drop we just got to get a 6 drop right away. So it can set up some very fun chains. And then our 5 drops include the Overlords, plus a 1 of Elishnorn to shut down opposing ETB effects while doubling ours. And then the mana base has lots of the tri lands, maxing out all the green ones, so we can more consistently cast our green spells early and have double green for the Overlord. We've got a one of Cavern of Souls to make our avatars uncounterable. And then we've got a whole host of shock lands, as well as the new Verge lands from Duskmorn, which will also enter untapped and produce both colors most of the time, since we have so many of the basic land types, including the shock lands and the triomes having all those basic types, and then a one of basic swamp in case we need to search it up. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a keepable hand. Turn to Beanstalk, and then we can cast a 2 mana Leyline Binding. Opponent's gonna have a look, probably taking the Beanstalk now. Could also go for Leyline Binding. But no, goes for Beanstalk. So I'll keep up Binding for now. 
And then this is also a 6-mana enchantment that can get Atraxa for us. Opponent's Thought Seizes again. Yeah, there's no point in casting the Binding because then they just take the Incarnation. Next turn we can Imp and the Overlord at least. Opponent did indeed take the Incarnation. And what to discard? Maybe a Knight of Autumn. Maybe next turn, Companion de Yorion, and then there's a chance we can cast Overlord on 5. I see opponents the Demon combo deck with a Slasher, so we'll need to respect a potential Bloodletter. So play this tapped and pass. Do we binding the Slasher if they just attack with it? Might still be okay, since it does represent a lot of damage. They've got an Archfiend next. Alright, I'll exile the Slasher. And then... Yeah, just gotta... Play a tap land and pass, I think. Combining again, and then next turn cast Overlord. So with up the Beanstalk, we would have drawn a lot of cards here. Opponent's got a Shield Roots, can punish the card draw from the Overlord, so that was a good one too. Could try and use Yorion to flicker the Bindings to get rid of Shield Roots, or we can just take the damage on the chin. Yeah, I'll try it. Might draw into more answers. Fatal Push can eventually do it, maybe. Nylea's Presence can go. And then Overlord can trade for Shieldred if they attack. A ritual Chamber makes a Demon. That dies to Fatal Push. So, yeah, I guess we'll draw, unless we want to... Gain life and scry, but I might be better off going for Yorion. Yeah, attacking with overlords is asking for trouble. One mana away from putting Yorion in hand and immediately casting it, which could also be worth it. In case our opponent has a discard spell left. But I'll still try this. And then pass with a plan of pushing the demon if they unlock the Annex. Harvester is fine. And our opponent unlocks the chamber. We'll see if they attack. They do. So now what I could do is double block the demon to trade for it and then push finish off Shieldred. Yeah, I guess I can still binding Shieldred first if I stack the triggers properly. So yeah, I'll just push. Opponent's gonna torch the tower with bargain now. Alright, fair enough. Was not expecting that one. So one Overlord down. They would have been able to use the blood token otherwise. And then play Flanker. And we'll gain life and scry. Incarnation seems perfect. Okay, time for Yorion. Still seems a little bit more important. Exile Binding, Overlord, and Flanker. Could have also given them the Archfiend back and get rid of the Room enchantment. And then, yeah, we want to make sure to exile Shieldred first. Here we can Scry 2 and Gain 2. 
And now Overlord can draw without taking damage. Vanishing Verse I can still cast, so that answers the Ritual Chamber. Alright, discard lands and pass. And the rest will take the Incarnation now. Probably still get rid of the Annex. Still have the Overlord doing work for us. And a Shieldress Edict now. Alright, so lose Yorion. Have Overlord left. Take some damage here. Opponent hanging back. Don't mind if I do. Can attack. There's a chance we just lose to Bloodletter if I don't have any blockers back, but I have to imagine we'll draw into something useful. Fatal push. We're missing a way to enable revolts. an Elish Norn for next turn. Eh, luckily just a land, opponent draws. And another Annex. Slasher attacks. Okay, so Elish Norn does not double the Overlord trigger when it attacks. So can start by attacking. And find a binding plus a gear hulk. So we should be safe now. Maybe start with Gear Hulk. See what we draw off Beanstalk. And then our opponent is facing a lethal next turn. Plus we still have a binding just in case. Fable's fine. Doesn't stop our attack. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Facing a Karuga deck. So it could be Quintorius Discover Combo. In which case his hand's pretty awful. Although I guess never mind. High Noon does prevent him from casting stuff with Discover. So that actually might be a hard counter. Yeah, I mean, if they're not playing that deck, this is not a great hand necessarily, but I'll try it. They might also have bounce spells for my enchantments. But yeah, with a discover mechanic you're still casting a spell. Which High Noon will prevent. Beanstalk for ramp, so yeah, it does look like that deck. Now we don't have a whole lot else going on either. So we're still waiting for Enigmatic Incarnation. Do I play Nowhere to Run just to have an enchantment in play to sacrifice? I think I do, since there's probably not going to be many creatures that die to minus three. Leyline Binding could help. So Yorion to hands. Tapped Headquarters. And Armadillo gets a land. So their plan B, I guess, is just casting these creatures. Should be beatable. And do I cast Yorion just to get a threat in play? Yeah, it feels kind of weak, but it's something, I guess.
So six mana. And there's Carnosaur, which we'll discover, but as they'll find out, they can't cast a spell they found. Otherwise, they would have been able to just combo off all the way and win the game here. All right, so still need to deal with Impersonator copying something. So we want to probably exile the Carnosaur with Vanishing Verse in their turn. And then for now, can impend the Overlord. Or we can keep up the Leyline Binding. I'll get the Overlord going. Carnosaur wants to attack. Yeah, I don't really want to take seven. And a Beanstalk Giant is next. The so yeah, opponent forced to play a fair game here. We get to cast another Overlord, keep a binding. High Noon for insurance might not be bad. And then next turn we can cast the Titan of Industry. Do we take eight? So what's the opponent's plan? Cast an Impersonator maybe? Copying... One of my flyers, which I can then exile, attack, and then finish them off with a high noon activation. Could be an option. So I'll take it. And they're just gonna take out the uh, Overlord. Fair enough. So they still haven't cast a spell technically. And I'll use the Binding now. Now the problem with Leyline Binding in play is that our opponent could copy it with the Impersonator, get rid of the High Noon and then still combo off. So I need to make sure I play another High Noon basically. And then if they try and remove it, I could sack it in response. But now we also have essentially 10 damage in play with double High Noon. So opponent casting a Beanstalk is not going to cut it. Well, it was interesting to uh, keep the hand just based on High Noon and it actually paying off. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems functional. Keeping based on the strength of Incarnation, still missing an Overlord to go with it. But we also have a Nowhere to Run onto for a bit of interaction, facing an aggressive red deck. These are the harder matchups for the deck, since we're not particularly fast. High Noon could slow them down, so that could be a decent play. Especially if they plot a Slick Shot, then they would not be able to deploy it next turn. If they want to cast another spell alongside it, that is. But our opponents go to Kumano. Yeah, we would have preferred to see a 2-drop. Because it's going to be harder for them to deploy all their 1-drops once High Noon hits the battlefield. So we're taking 3. Fatal push is a draw. So now I'm probably better off keeping up Nowhere to Run. And then next turn I can go High Noon plus Fatal Push.
Another creature will get some plus one counters here. Arcanist. So it doesn't die to nowhere to run, but we can push it next turn. So for now, just take out the Swiss Spear. They could save it with a Monstrous Rage, I suppose, but they don't have it. And stick to the plan. Although we won't have an untapped land for Incarnation next turn, if we want to cast a High Noon, I think it's still worth it. High Noon is also pretty decent in the face of Arcanist, since it also prevents them from casting a spell if they've already cast something else. But still going to be pushing their three-part creature. And then a Saga transforming is not casting the spell, unlike a battle, for instance. So push Arcanists. Could have waited since there's no spell in the graveyard to get back. So take four at least. And our opponent puts Gigantha in hand, so that's fine. And Gear Hulk, not an ideal draw. I'll put Yorion in hand, so shields are down. Next turn, Incarnation, Sack. A 2 mana enchantment, get a 3 drop, can maybe get a Skyclave Apparition. Or a Knight of Autumn, can also blow up their enchantment. Our opponent's got a Cell Sword, puts us to 2. So maybe they have another Cell Sword in hand. Which. They wouldn't be able to use thanks to High Noon if I destroy the etching. So that's going to be the play here. And then Mimic versus Verge. If I play Mimic next turn, I can cast a Gear Hulk. Although, if I get Knight of Autumn, I can also copy the Knight to gain life, which isn't bad. But if they cast Gigantha, then having Gear Hulk as an answer would be perfect, so that seems more important. Plus, we can also play a Sanctuary Warden. Okay. And then I think destroying the etching is more important than gaining for life. Because it also prevents potential uh, pump spells from working. Xur would also be nice if we had more mana. But yeah, Knight of Autumn it is. And then flickering it with Yorion. Can maybe gain us four life later. Still at a precarious two life, so can't feel too comfortable since we're just dead to, I guess, a Ramanap runes activation too. So I guess in the face of Ramanap, I maybe should have just gained four. Alright, hopefully they don't draw the land here. Bone had a fatal push, that's unexpected. And now Swiss Spear, so only take one. And now Gear Hulk can gain two life. And is it worth it to sack High Noon, get a three drop? We know which ones we could get. I guess a flanker can scry two and gain two. That's not bad. And then probably don't need either of these anymore. So we're at five. If they play Gigantha, we just flicker Gearhulk with Yorion. 
So one unknown card left in hand. And I can also play the Cell Sword. Yeah, it does feel like they might have another Cell Sword in hand. So I probably just attack with a Gear Hulk so I can flicker Gear Hulk to gain more life. As opposed to them trading for the flanker. And another incarnation can get a 5 drop, so I guess that's okay. But the game should be over now. Back up to 8. Opponent can now play Gigantha with a counter, so it's a 6-6. Six, six. But if they had a Cell Sword left, 6 damage is still not enough. And they are facing 9 damage now. So there was certainly a window where Ramanap Runes could have won the game. In hindsight, maybe just gaining 4 with Knight would have been better. But yeah, there's Gigantha, and our opponent's just dead on board. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. No green mana to cast Presence. So we're looking at Fatal Push. Turn 3 Overlord. Yeah, it's not great. Also, I guess I can't even Fatal Push unless I play Fountain and then Verge. So then Mimic will be tapped on 3 when I want to impend the Overlord. So yeah, this is a bit of a disaster. This seems better. And then second Overlord versus Vanishing Verse, which I'm not close to casting. I guess we'll just keep the creatures. Opponent with a Lanar Elves in green-white. For now, maybe Temple Garden next turn, play a tapped Mimic. Although I'm pretty likely to play Mimic as a land here, so I'll just do it now. That way if we draw 2-drop we can still cast it and keep curving out. Opponent on an Angel deck. Alright. And they're off to a quick start. Play Headquarters, so next turn we can impend the Overlord at least. And then we're hoping to find our Enigmatic Incarnation. Opponent's got the Company, and they did find two Angels. So already lots of catching up to do. Could draw and discard here, or I can just impend and then next turn cast a 5-3, although I don't know if that's going to be good enough as a blocker. And Bishop for more life gain, and Valkyrie number 2, so yeah, puns all in here, and uh... We're just dead. Alright, so on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a slow but powerful hand. If we can hit some land drops. We've got up the beanstalk into Overlord into Incarnation, get a 6 drop. Facing the discard deck, so love to have a up the beanstalk in play. And then hope they can't take away my Overlord. It's gonna be a Thought Seize. Alright. At least we've got double Incarnation. And then Incarnation, sacking Incarnation can get an Overlord, which in turn can keep the ball rolling. Now we can take out the Zombie. We've 
got an enchantment we don't mind sacking, so could also get a Knight of Autumn to blow up Waste Knot. Liliana's a good one. I think I'm okay giving them a zombie here, as opposed to more mana, which could turn into more discard. Could now also get Skyclave Apparition to get rid of Liliana. Could still do that next turn. So yeah, Waste Knot versus Liliana. I think Liliana's carrier. No fatal push end of turn. And then getting Glass Pool Mimic can also copy the Apparition, should we need to answer a Shield Root, for instance. Sanitarium forces a discard. Again, probably fine giving them a zombie token by discarding Flanker. And take two. Okay. So now with double incarnation, we do have some pretty interesting options. Since we can sack something to the first incarnation, and if it's an enchantment, we can once again sacrifice it to the second one, which is still on the stack. So I could go for an Overlord, and then turn the Overlord into a 6-drop. In the face of Waste Knot, I don't want to draw and discard yet. More mana means I can play Yorion. So get Overlord of the Hauntwoods. And then Overlord of the Hauntwoods can turn into... I've got a few options here. Can make it the Red Overlord, so next turn I can get... Atraxa, or Titan of Industry. Or we can draw with Sanctuary Warden, which would be good too. Now let's keep going up the chain. Now a land can go. And a duress is gonna miss. And a shield red. Pretty good last card. But we should be able to beat it. I can start by attacking. If they trade, that's fine by me. Opponent takes it. And then now Sanctuary Warden lose a bit more life to Shield Roots, but then I can get Titan of Industry or Atraxa. Both are fine. So which do we prefer? Yeah, I guess Titan's fine. Blow up the Waste Knots. Gain some life. And I don't think our opponent's coming back from this. Next turn we can put Yorion in hand and cast it, flickering all our stuff. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Kahira. Could be blue-eyed control. In which case, we don't want to keep a hand with a bunch of spot removal, but we can always discard to the Overlord. So I think I still try it. And blue-eyed it is. High Noon could also make it awkward for them to cast multiple spells, but generally speaking, the control deck doesn't mind just keeping up mana for counters. And our opponents get their own High Noon. So, can still cast mine, or we could Vanishing Verse, but I'm not in a hurry. So it's a Mexican standoff here. Right, let's see if we get to impend the Overlord. My guess is they probably have a counter spell, but it's good to get those out of their hands.
Alright, that works. Fatal push is gone. At least nowhere to run is an enchantment I can sacrifice to Enigmatic Incarnation. Bone's gonna deduce. Alright, so we get our Overlord going. Can um, almost cast a green one. Need to wait a few more turns. Missing double green for Hauntwoods right now. So next turn maybe go for Yorion plus a tap land. I do not have many basic lands, so this Field of Ruins is kind of scary. Yeah, just have a Swamp, so I wouldn't be able to have double green left. My opponent actually went for Gloom Lake Verge, so I still have double green. Now five mana to ferry. We cannot vanishing verse, so don't have a great answer to it, and they get to keep up a counter spell in my turn. Ooh, Cavern of Souls, perfect draw. Name Avatar. Cast Overlord. And now we even have red mana to use High Noon to maybe deal damage to Teferi. Don't see any red mana for the opponent to sacrifice theirs. Teferi keeps plussing. So they'll probably have removal for the Overlord. So next turn we also get access to the blue Overlord. So our opponents may be waiting to cast a Sweeper to clear both at once. Nope, they're gonna just main phase march x equals 5, untap two lands. So they could still have a counter remaining. Leyline Binding, the perfect answer to Teferi. So what's the plan? I could... Cast another uncounterable overlord and then try to binding in their turn. Yeah, that's an option. Five damage is not enough to finish off the fairy. Although we are potentially overextending into a sweeper by playing another overlord since we'll have two. So maybe it is still better to go for Yorion, although that one they can counter. And then they could still counter binding in my turn. So tricky spot. Yeah, maybe I just pass. With the option of sacking High Noon and casting Leyline Binding. Could have cast it before they get a chance to activate the fairy. They're just gonna keep plussing. You know what? I'm not. If I binding now they could still counter and then have another counter spell available in my turn. So it's better if they maybe tap out to try and answer the overlord. And then we deal with Teferi without them being able to respond. Although, as we've seen, they also have answers to enchantments. And yeah, once again a march. So now we can binding Teferi. How long do you want to wait for? Overlord's gone. And now we can go back to casting our various overlords. I'll keep High Noon to maybe deal damage to Planeswalker. And we'll see if they can remove the binding or if they're just going for a token, which we can answer pretty easily. Yeah, I would love to find an enigmatic incarnation, but the chances of that resolving are pretty slim. At least our opponent's no longer drawing two cards per turn. Alright, let's see if we get to attack. Could also see Wandering Emperor exile the Overlord. Yep. Feel the energy of battle, then guide it like Still get an extra everywhere token. But yeah, our hand's not particularly exciting right now. You are not much of a roadblock. 
Yeah, I'm a little bit short of casting Yurion and having the mana to sack High Noon. Otherwise, I could have given them back to Fairy temporarily just to take it out with a High Noon. So we don't risk them getting back at the Fairy if they remove the binding. But that's not quite going to work. So yeah, this Yurion I will resolve right now, but it just doesn't do much. Yeah, I guess it's still fine to have a threat. I guess never mind, I would have had just enough. This, it's only 5 mana to sack High Noon. So I could have made a play of Flickering Binding and then High Noon onto Fairy. But we can also wait for them to get to Fairy back and deal 5 damage to it, I guess. Opponent makes a Samurai. Keep watch for intruders. And of the Beanstalk would go a long way. Blue Overlord's excellent too, so attack. Yeah, Cavern of Souls doing a lot of work. Opponent's got another Emperor, not too surprising. I hope you're ready to lose. I am Could mean that they don't actually have a counterspell in hand since Let's say I had an Atraxine hand, I would have been able to cast it without them having any response. The Overlord, they also kind of need to deal with. Fountain Port, more activated abilities. Kahira's next. So that's their one spell for now. I have got new moves to teach you. Nice, found our incarnation. Step one attack with Overlord. See if they have another Emperor that they want to flash in. Interestingly, with Citadel, they could have named Red to give them access to the High Noon activation. We get to attack. And I'll keep another binding. And we'll maybe start with Titan. And then we do have enough mana to cast both, but of course with High Noon we're limited to one spell per turn. That resolves. At this point we can maybe blow up their High Noon and go for a shield counter. And shield counter on probably the Overlord. Seems more valuable than Titan. Alright, so now if we sack the High Noon, we can start double spelling again. And we can still binding in their turn. Now I don't know if they're playing Sunfall or what would be worse is Farewell exiling enchantments. So you still have to be careful. That point's going to march again. Not interested in getting to ferry back. So that's their one spell this turn. Okay, go ahead and attack. Still want to wait on incarnation until we find a second impactful spell. Although I guess it's tricky to sack High Noon and play two impactful cards in one turn. So we'll maybe still try this. That resolves. So now what we can do is go to end step, sack the Binding, which has Teferi to get Atraxa, and then High Noon can finish off Teferi. So I guess we'll see what we find of Atraxa first. Another Binding. Untapped Land. Artifacts. And Zur can be our creature. Probably still better to wait until their upkeep to sack High Noon so they cannot cast an instant 
in my end step. Opponent makes a treasure. So, Sakainun to ferry down. And still have double binding available. Alright, opponent bouncing their own to ferry. I guess that works. Unless we want to binding it, which would prevent them from casting it and activating. Sure. At this point, I'm not playing around farewell anymore. Opponent counters. We can binding again. Just having the binding in play would also be good for Zur, since we can make a 6 6 out of it. So our opponent's down to one card in hand. They could still draw with Fountain Port, sacking the treasure, which is what they do. And it looks like they found a counter spell. All right, so they get to bounce the ferry, but they don't have the mana to replay it. So it's not a disaster. And next turn, we might be able to close it out with Zur animating a bunch of our enchantments. Especially now that we can clear a path. And our opponent explodes. Wow, what a game. All right, so we good to see our enigmatic overlords in action. And the deck is a little slow to get going, so it might struggle against the more aggressive decks, especially in the best of one meta. You might encounter more aggro decks that can present lethal very quickly, and then you don't want to be starting the game with a bunch of tap lands or shock lands. So I would not necessarily recommend it in best of one right now, but as soon as you start playing against more mid-range and control strategies, the synergies really start flourishing, and you get the advantage of Yorion in those longer games as well, and then Enigmatic Incarnation can be a lot of fun. So definitely a deck with a ton of deck building options when it comes to all the one-offs you can search up, but the core of Incarnation with the blue and green overlord is probably where you want to start out. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.